CLD Broadcasting Corporation. Welcome to New Zealand. My name is Mbalo Bangu. Coming up in this edition, President Anes Baikuruma calls consultation with Zimbabwean President Robert Mugabe on African representation in the UN Security Council. Parliament ratifies the Civil Legislation Act of 2016. World Bank approves over $45 million support to Sierra Leone's health system. And head of delegation of International Telecommunications Union stresses need for national laws to combat cyber crimes in the country. All these stories and more, including business and sports, in the sedition of New Zealand. President Ernest Baikuruma has held consultations with the President of Zimbabwe, Robert Gibge Mugabe, for a common African position in the ongoing United Nations reforms for representation in the Security Council. Razia Bashkamara now reports. Giving a brief interview to local journalists after a closed door consultation with President Robert Mugabe. President Ernest Baikuruma said he is in Zimbabwe to further consult and to strengthen the bilateral ties between Sierra Leone and Zimbabwe, and also in his capacity as chairman of the Committee of Ten Heads of the African Union for the reform of the United Nations Security Council. He has been assigned by the African Union to advance its demand for representation in the Security Council. Both presidents had fruitful discussions on issues bordering on the bilateral ties between Sierra Leone and Zimbabwe, and that they have also discussed issues on the ongoing United Nations security reform in which Africa has presented a position paper. President Robert Mugabe affirmed his commitment to the fruitful cooperation between Sierra Leone and Zimbabwe and the United Nations reform in the Security Council. We are the one to see Africa have a permanent seat in the Security Council. Meanwhile, President Ernest Baikoruma also held discussions with President Jacob Zuma of South Africa. That report by Razia Bashkama was get, read in our studios by Abubakar Bangur. The visiting head of delegation of the International Telecommunications Union, ITU, has stressed the need for the establishment of national laws to combat cyber-related crimes in the country. The head of delegation of the International Telecommunications Union was addressing journalists at the weekly press briefing hosted by the Ministry of Information and Communications in Freetown. Abu Samsis in our reports. The head of delegation of the International Telecommunications Union was addressing journalists at the weekly press briefing hosted by the Information and Communications Ministry at UE Building in Freetown. Marco Obiso informs journalists that lack of adequate collaboration with sectoral ministries, departments and agencies may hamper the effectiveness of the information ministry on addressing cybersecurity in Sierra Leone. He, however, expresses optimism on the political will and the level of commitment by Sierra Leoneans and the national security apparatus on the way forward to combat cybercrime and terrorism and their preparedness. The three-day international conference on cybercrime aims at raising public awareness on its potential threats in the sub-region. Uh, what we have seen here uh, yesterday and within these three days is something that is very close to our heart as, as UN, because at the end of the day, I think it's belonging to the UN system, is the, the wish of the political commitment, first of all, but also the wish of the country to work as a whole, to work uh, in a cooperative and collaborative manner. Also at the press briefing, the National Coordinator of Cybersecurity and the Intelligent Response Team, Dr. Amza Bangura, 
says that the collaboration between the Ministry of Information and the Office of National Security yielded dividend formation of security networks across the country by the police and the military. At UE Building, members of OSIWA, including the legal officer of Open Society Justice Initiative, Maxwell Kadri, paid a courtesy call on the Minister of Information, Mohamed Pangura. Because it's still repealed by that decision. And by necessary inference, if Sludge, for example, using that precedent, brings a case at the ECOWAS court, using the same language, whether you do anything or you don't do anything, the decision of the court will go to show. You, my brother, you cannot even, don't even talk about the, the, the ECOWAS court. Uh, let's, uh, this is what I asked my colleagues last time when we started the discussion. People say, oh, they are doing this, and I say, tell me one point in time when and uh, they just go beyond the president's time of office and give me a case, clear case in point where a journalist has been arrested, prosecuted, and, 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 and in prison. Yeah. It's just the yeah. Be arrested and detained. The next day they go because plead for you. Yeah. The cost noise, you release the individual, but already be tainted. This is the problem. So until you give me a, a case uh, that has been successfully prosecuted, then I can sign with you. But you damage your repetition all the time by merely arresting somebody, you know. Better. Let's find better alternatives. For SLBC News, Abdul Samsi say report. The World Bank has approved two new projects worth 45.5 million United States dollars to support the Syrian health system. The Health Delivery and System Support Project is designed to contribute to the flagship program in the President's Recovery Plan. It will support the government's objective of increasing the utilization and improving on the quality of essential maternal and child health. As Joseph Stanley reports, this disclosure was made at a news conference at the bank's office in Freetown. Joseph Stanley now reports. During the press, the World Bank country manager, Parminder Brat, said the International Development Association financed the Regional Disease Surveillance System Enhancement Project and also targets the ECOWAS nations of Guinea, Liberia, Senegal and Nigeria with similar support to strengthen their disease surveillance measure. He maintained that the project is complementary to ongoing efforts and will be coordinated closely with key development partners that are currently engaged in the post-Ebola planning and implementation process. Mr. Bratt added that the project will directly support the rebuilding of the government health system from the bottom, working with and through government institutions to rebuilding robust health system that is resilient. The plan for this new $30 million facility for Sierra Leone is to strengthen laboratory capacity, <coughs> strengthen disease surveillance, and one particular area in Sierra Leone which is very weak, there has been a lot of focus on human health. There hasn't been adequate focus on animal health. I think you only have one veterinary doctor in the whole of the country. I think we need to strengthen the systems of veterinary specialists in Sierra Leone so that diseases which are transmitted from animals to <coughs> humans can be detected early, they can be controlled because nobody wants to see Ebola again. Health and Sanitation Minister Dr. Abubakar Fofana on behalf of the government expressed thanks and appreciation for the support and that the project will focus on the president's two priority areas of the post-Ebola recovery for the resilient health system. Dr. Abubakar Fufana informed journalists that the involvement of the bank in the development of the country spans years, highlighting some of the key contributions of the bank to the socio-economic development of the country with focus on the health sector. When the Ebola virus disease struck, the bank was very flexible and very quick to reprogram funds from this project to support the response. Hence, the first source of external funding for the response came from the World Bank. And learning from that experience, the bank has since introduced what they call a zero dollar component to each of our new projects. 
The minister maintained that the bank before the Ebola outbreak has been supporting the ministry with multi-million dollars projects, adding that through these projects, they have for the past year has been able to provide additional incentive for healthcare workers on the performance-based financing project. An interactive session formed part of the news conference. SLBC News, Joseph Stanley reporting. The Vice President, Dr. Victor Bokaifu, has opened an international conference on cyber security and terrorism at the Miata Conference Center, Brookfields, in Freetown. The conference is aimed at combating issues of cyber crimes in the sub region. Let's now join Abu Samsise again. Addressing ICT stakeholders, Vice President Dr. Victor Bokaifu informed stakeholders, including visiting delegates from the International Telecommunications Union, that concerted efforts must be employed to combat cyber threat and cyber terrorism perpetrated at global level. Vice President Dr. Victor Bokarifo commended the Ministry of Information and Communications for reviving the government-owned Sierra Leone Daily Mail for the effective dissemination of news across the country. Dr. Victor Bokarifo noted that we now live in a rapidly changing information-rich world as part of the global village with expanded information and communications technologies. He, however, noted that we are confronted with new threats, namely cyber threats and terrorism. Commenting on the benefits derived from the ICT, Vice President Dr. Victor Bokarifo said, we must combat cyber threats and terrorism concertedly as no country is too small to shy away from the fight against the threats. He added that Sierra Leone is more interconnected than before through the Africa Coast to Europe submarine cable, which has been deployed in almost 75% in the country. Dr. Victor Bokarifo reminded ICT stakeholders that President Kumar and other heads of state and government met in Abuja to sign the 2011 Directive to Combating Cyber Crimes and Cyber Terrorism for the sub region. The head of the delegation of the International Telecommunications Union, Marco Obiso, commended the government of President Kumar for demonstrating their commitment in addressing the potential threats of cyber crimes and terrorism. Dr. Obiso highlighted threats of organized crimes, including the siphoning of millions of dollars from banks as related cyber crimes in a country like Bangladesh, among others. Information Minister Mohamed Bangura pointed out the positive role played by the government of President Krumah in the promotion of the ICT industry in the country, as well as the provision of about $75 million for the building of the infrastructure. The Chief of Staff and the Office of the ONS, Ahmed Sanon, said the Office of National Security has been involved alongside the Information Ministry and other relevant agencies in building a policy framework for cyber security. The Deputy Minister of Information, Cornelius DeVoe, called for more investment by the private sector with the view of promoting the agenda for prosperity in the ICT sector in the country. For SRBC News, Abdul Samsese reporting. Parliament has ratified the Civil Registration Act 2016. The bill was enacted after a hectic, hectic debate by members of Parliament on both sides of the House. Let's now join Mahawa Aliu for that report. The objective of the bill is to provide for the amendment and the consolidation of the laws relating to the compulsory registration of citizens and non-citizens resident in Sierra Leone, to provide for the issuance of identity cards, to provide for the establishment of the National Civil Registration Authority responsible for registration of birth, marriages, death, adoption and divorce throughout Sierra Leone and to provide for other related matters.
Presenting the bill to Parliament prior to passing into law, the Minister of Internal Affairs, retired Major Paulo Conte, says, among other things, that the bill will inform the national and productive electronics data that will be used by various sectors for the planning and development of the nation, particularly for the consolidation of a national registration, which is currently being done in a scattered manner by different entities. Can you imagine if somebody as of now wants to get an ID card from Big Column? It would cost maybe 30,000 leons one way for a card that only costs 12,500 leons. So there's no incentive for anyone to get an ID card. But hopefully with this new system, we would have a center located in Safoko, Liba Chiefdom, based there. So anytime you'll be registered for a card that only costs 12,500 leons. So there's no incentive for anyone to get an ID card. But hopefully with this new system, we would have a center located in Safoko, Liba Chiefdom, based there. So anytime you'll be registered. People who reside in Freetown and they are registered somewhere up country. Where you are registered is where you'll be eligible to vote because when the votes are registered, it's been extracted. That is where you will, you will, you will vote. The kids, it's about this size. It's like an iPad. So when we say it's mobile, it's entirely mobile. And for some of the designs we're looking at, they, they are powered by, by solar. So we can, once it is recorded, then we can ask a member of the team from that locality to make sure that everyone is registered. Members of parliament who contributed to the protracted debate before enactment appreciated the trend in which the government is taking its development strides, cognizance of the registration of all citizens and non-citizens compulsorily and for all the nationally productive purposes connected therewith. Upon passing of this bill, those who intend to get their ID cards in Kenema district, in Bujeru district, in Panadabu district, will be made easier for them. It will be decentralized. The civil registration system will be decentralized. And it is referred to as a compulsory civil registration system. So how can it be compulsory when the people of Kenema cannot afford to come to the registration officer and get their ID cards? How can it be compulsory? But this bill is saying if you agree, if I agree, if we agree as a parliament, that will be made very easy and the system will be put in place, the modalities will be put in place. All we need is an, an, an enabling legislation and then your people who have suffered, who have been deprived from getting their necessary ID cards to access their bank accounts, to take loans and other necessary documentation will now be available, including the people of Kaila. Message, special message, because no sooner we pass this bill today, with your permission, Mr. Speaker, the minister and his able staff intend to do mass registration exercise. Mass registration exercise. Both majority and minority leader of the House acknowledge the provisions embedded in the National Civil Registration Act 2016, to which they refer to the ID cards are going to serve a multi-purpose function that is similar to that of the Social Security number in the United States of America. After the bill had gone through the first and second reading before the Committee of the Whole House, it was unanimously passed into law with some amendments. SLBC News, Mahawa Aliyu, Freetown. Stakeholders of Kono District 
have engaged their people on the ongoing dispute concerning the clearing of what they say are unwanted materials from two bridges leading to Koedu town. The bridges are to be demolished and rebuilt because illegal mining has undermined their foundations. Air services saw many abandoned mining pits under the two bridges. Let's now join Asmi Uba for that report. One of the two bridges uh, leading to the main Koidu town. Before this time, illegal mining was happening beneath this bridge in this community. Drug, uh, beneath the bridge, they engaged in illegal mining, undermining the foundation of the bridge itself. Congo Bridge, as it is called, according to many residents of the district, has gravels which they say have diamonds. Because of the ongoing township roadworks in the district, the two bridges have become a bone of contention. The dilemma they faced was whether to demolish the bridge or renovate it. But SLR engineers recommended that the two bridges be demolished. This issue has divided the districts. While some support the clearing of the gravel to give way to the construction of a new bridge and put an end to illegal mining under the bridge, others say clearing the gravel is town mining and it is illegal. Beneath the bridges, one can see holes like tunnels that were dug by illegal miners who had undermined the bridge. Even a police officer was arrested for engaging in illegal mining. Samuel Decker owns a house near the bridge. I see people at night engaging in illegal mining. I support the cleaning of the gravel as it will serve as a disincentive for miners. It is good that they are demolishing the bridge. Cooper Joseph Sakri also owns a house near the bridge but holds a contrary view. Certain people then they wouldn't they behind this. And the investor they wouldn't come, nothing gets them people then they. Because if you look what they have on a Congo bridge, the one they wear them in the dig day. Yes, where they say this that. Now then they then out today they show the man say gravel there. I tried to dig a septic tank but couldn't so it's not true that people are engaged in illegal mining. They know the area. In this town hall meeting, stakeholders were brought together by prominent sons of the districts to discuss the issue that has divided their people. The conveners are the Minister of State, East Karamokaba, Minister of Transport and Aviation, Balogun Kuruma, and Sierra Leone Ambassador to Russia, John Yambasu. The meeting was a frank discussion as representatives of APC and SLPP, chiefs, students' representatives, bike riders, civil society, youths and women had the opportunity to make their points. The Connor Students' Union issued a position paper condemning the clearing of the gravel, describing it as town mining. Its president, Jeremiah Ea Banja, calls on the authorities to stop the mining. They also call for the proceeds to be used judiciously. According to plans, when sold, proceeds will be used to build schools, markets, recreational facility, and public toilets for the people. I'm standing right here in uh, front of one of the holes uh, which was dug by um, illegal miners. As you can see, I'm informed that um, this hole has been dug. Um, the, bridge, the bridge here has been undermined. Uh, this was done uh, by illegal miners. Nobody, nobody knew who exactly did this to this community. Chairman Mines Committee in the Kwedu New Sembe Hunton Council, Councillor Mohamed Jabi, said the clearing will give hope to the people and his support seats. Minister of State Iskra Mokaba told his people that enough sensitization was not done, but assured them that their concerns will be looked into and many more interest groups will be brought on board to bring credibility to the process. He said the process is not mining as unwanted materials are only removed and taken to another location where every stakeholder witnesses the washing and verifying. Mr. Kaba said according to survey, if the bridge is renovated without clearing the gravel, it will always serve as a bait for illegal miners. He said the miners have undermined the two bridges as holes are dug all over the place and engineers advised that the only option was to demolish the bridges. Minister of State East said lives have been lost under the two bridges and government will not sit and allow citizens losing their lives in such a manner. The structural integrity of both bridges, the cause of illicit mining for these many years, will not become compromised. Another part, the Chinese contract for Chico, when they assigned the road graph, 
They ask them for produce an engineering design that they need of the yield of quantities. In that yield of quantities, the form of green breed was there for rehabilitation. Now the other road, it was by the damage that the fire was for, was not for demolition. That is a problem they do all over. Now, a team of engineers then, they find out to why is there heating a machine that was there, then the fire pattern become a great bit, the vibration of the tumor. So they all want to investigate whether they can rehabilitate the bit or not. The engineers, between the SLA consultant, the uh, Chico engineers, and the 24 uh, consultants, they say they are not going to be able to rehabilitate that bridge. The reason for over 40 years, we will not be able to go under that bridge, we will be possible. Salut en basse et l'autre à John Yambassou, appeal for calm and praise the Kono Students Union for their position. Ambassador Yambassou said illegal mining has destroyed Kono and said people should focus on the construction of the bridge and not diamonds, which have had little benefit to the districts. Minister of Transport Balogun Kuma said other bridges in the districts have been destroyed by illegal miners, describing the Congo Bridge as a death trap. Mr. Kuruma said it is not strange for gravels to be cleared in a site before proper engineering work commences. He called on the students and other residents who are against the clearing to dialogue with their authorities, assuring them that as leaders they will protect their interests. As work continues on the bridges, the issue is now the talk of the town. Illegal mining has not only destroyed Kono, but it has deprived government of badly needed revenue. While some say the bridges should be demolished, others say even if diamonds are used to build a new bridge, if the gravels are not removed, illegal miners will always have field days at night. For SLBC News, Asmiba. It's now time for our business news. Bring you the business update. Um, coming up, we begin with the foreign exchange rate. The US dollar buys at 6,102 leons and sells at 6,225 leons. The pound sterling buys at 8,190 leons and sells at 8,359 leons. The euro buys at 6,773 leons and sells at 6,905 leons. In exchange rates, it's brought to you courtesy of the Central Bank. The people of Britain have voted to exit the European Union. But what does the aftermath mean for Sierra Leone, a former colony, and has benefited from its Commonwealth membership from education, health and aid? Let's join Lucy and Ganda as she takes a look at that story. Some financial analysts, bookmakers and economists are predicting serious recession, but the governor of the Bank of England, Mark Carney, has assured entrepreneurs that modalities have been put in place to address any eventualities. Sierra Leone, though a sovereign nation like all former colonies of Britain, has been receiving aid from British charities including Oxfam, Tier Fund, Helen Keller, and Action Aid, among several others. Through DFID, the there has been budgetary support to Sierra Leone and has been funding many government projects. DFID recently provided 15 million US dollars grant as part of the $55 million that the World Bank needed to support agribusiness in the country. The European Union recently funded the construction of the Freetown Conakry Highway and undertook to pay about 720 billion euros for the construction of the Banda Juma Liberia Highway, expected to boost trade between Sierra Leone and Liberia. 
financial remittances from the diaspora to family members and loved ones in Sierra Leone is another important aspect of the economy and according to economists that aspect is not properly captured. Total amount of remittances from Britain alone in a year may run into millions of pounds. If there is an employment boom in Britain and the pound sterling does not fall to the euro and the US dollar, then Leone stands to benefit from Brexit. If it is the opposite in the coming weeks and months, then Leone will see a drop in remittances. How will UK's decision to quit the EU play out on Sierra Leone is highly a wait and see affair. We now bring you clips of bitter exchanges as the European Parliament debates Britain's exit from the European Union. The central figure in the Leave campaign is the UK Independence Party leader. Nigel Farage. Leave campaign, it was time to rejoice. Let June the 23rd go down in our history as our independence day. We warned the chamber that Britain's departure was the beginning of the end for Europe. We now offer a beacon of hope to Democrats across the rest of the European continent. I'll make one prediction this morning. The United Kingdom will not be the last member state to leave the European Union. Eurosceptic political parties in several other countries, Austria, Hungary, the Netherlands and France, are now calling for referendums of their own, especially France's right-wing Front National and its leader, Marine Le Pen, who's delighted with the Brexit. But for those considering... Business News, Lucien Ganda, Freetown. That was Daphne Zainab Kamala with Business News. The Chairman Parliamentary Oversight Committee on Transparency and Accountability, the Honorable Claude Commander, has said that the Freetown City Council is the worst council in the country. He made a statement during a rounding up of an oversight visit across the country. Let's now join Mahawa Aliu again. One can make that at the Twitter Council, and the worst council, for all the countries are all done with The worst council must say, FCC, the worst council. You can see even the stunting report they're going to do for a couple of billions of Leon's way government to transfer to this municipality. And the billions of Leon's way they generate between the municipality. And the billions of years way DSDP and ICHP, they all the point to the country. For account of the people, we parliament in the for represent the people. But that they will go down at the end, it's no one report at all, no one account. And we know we accept it. We must account to the people. They are suffering. The people want to know what the municipality they do. They shout for money and money are poured into the system. That projects where they don't pour billions of leaves. Look, the two projects then, the several down people want for no waiting that they update the new locust housing. People want for no waiting at the status. People are not there to report. They're unacceptable. Honorable Claude Commander, however, joined the sittings with the Freetown City Council to July 9th this year. Meanwhile, the committee has been focusing on a host of challenges surrounding projects in local councils. As the committee continues to scrutinize councils, members have identified the frequent transfer of core staffs in council, inadequate funding of ward committee members, own source revenue mobilization, multiple bank accounts, amongst others. At the Kenema District Council, accounting figures and project documentation were said to be misleading. Wise documentation from the Kenema City Council was viewed by committee members as a total disappointment. Meanwhile, the committee commended Kailahun District Council, Liberian and social welfare activities, but was displeased with the district education officer, water resources and the district agricultural officer. Chairman Kamanda commended the Board District Council for project implementation and funds disbursements judiciously. 
It was a total disappointment in Pujan, where both the district agricultural officer and the district librarian could not account for monies received. <laughs> No, no, what is it that happen inside agriculture? A whole entity way in the air. It's unfortunate. Come back to me. You then, if you are giving fifteen percent to engineer, I'm here by giving twenty three percent, fifty percent. Something the way you bring here. Yeah. What did you don't do? You get a lot of money. Even you on that administration, you get money too. A lot of tape on money too. If you look, they spend a lot of money on policy and that, yeah. all on patrolling, yeah. monitoring, supervision, clinical yeah. monitoring, all this are there. What do you do? They will make you send to the 70 million. Is it efficient at the 70 million? No. You know you have to account for that. They are making you look at bench. Make a show for you to control the constitution or push I do in the of your issues. So that at the end of the day, we see the, 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 the supply market of food, meat, everything. For it's like when you talk about it, listen. You need to go your way, this go your way. And I need to go the position for thousand for all that and go shape this yourself for them. That is very crucial. We don't have to see that for me. Go in shape and that's the end of it. That's how it we suffer the informant that we have to do this year. It's unacceptable. There is a whole deal not able to articulate the issues when you have in that sector. You need to do that in the definition of what you hear. How many chickens? So I'm going to do that. Then if you say now each and every chicken of me, I'm hoping for the idea that they go to the ends. The committee has promised to recommend tough actions against sectoral heads. In all of the other councils visited, the committee observed that there is a huge mismanagement of government funds, most especially with the district agricultural officers, district education officers, and water resources, among others. We shall continue to bring you more stories on the oversight visit. SLBC News, Mahawa Aliu, Freetown. A report by school children from senior secondary schools shows numerous factors affecting quality education in the country. The study commissioned by the National Commission for Children is a step towards understanding the effects of current educational system on children. The findings were presented to the Conference of Principals and other educational stakeholders at a ceremony held at the Wokel Secondary School in Freetown. Princess Gibson now reports. Although access to education is gradually increasing, most people are questioning the quality of education. This has also been linked to poor performance at public exam, which resulted to the Professor Gbamanja Commission of Inquiry eight years ago. There are still growing concerns on the quality of education in the country. One latest institution that is concerned is the National Commission for Children, which commissioned a study by four senior students of the St. Joseph's Convent, St. Edward's Grammar School and the National Pentecostal Secondary School. The study looks at four perspectives for quality education. The school environment, the Ministry of Education, the home and community and also the roles and responsibilities of the child. Some of the findings on the school environment include poor conditions of service by teachers, demand for money by some male teachers, compulsory sales of pamphlets by teachers to pupils, and congested classrooms. Classrooms are congested, untidy, and in most schools, classrooms have very positive facilities. Some classes are too big and the teachers find it difficult to control the class size. Some children even reported that there are 65 pupils and even a girl in the class. 
on the Ministry of Education perspective, the findings include poor supervision of teachers, performance, and the recruitment of incompetent teachers. Poor supervision of teachers' perform performance by the Ministry of Education, Science and Technology. Incompetent teachers de deployed to school result to lack of proper transmission of knowledge to the people. On the home and community, the prevalence of single parenthood, the non-involvement of the community in raising children, and the lack of monitoring and supervision by the parents. Lack of monitoring and supervision by parents, especially with regard to their children's schoolwork. Parents usually delegate too many domestic choice to the children at home with little or no time for studies. The findings on the roles and responsibilities of the child include much engagement in extracurricular and immoral activities, examination malpractices, and the refusal of children to adhere to parental and community guidance. Most students depend highly on examination malpractice, such as leakages of questions, most of which are sold to them by examination officials or teachers, and in some cases, exchanged for sex. This problem greatly affects um, the quality education in our country because proper evaluation can't be done or made since they don't know the students who are brilliant enough to pass and those who are not to pass. The report also contains various recommendations on the findings highlighted. The chairperson of the National Commission for Children, Olainka Laga, calls for a strategy by stakeholders to improve on the situation raised by the report. Princess Gibson, SLBC News. To end news, here are the main points again. President Ernest Baikuruma has held consultations with Zimbabwean President Robert Mugabe on the UN Security Council reform for Afri African representation. Parliament has ratified the Civil Registration Act 2016. The World Bank has approved over $45 million support to Sierra Leone's health system. And the head of delegation of the International Telecommunications Union, Marco Obiso, has stressed the need for setting up national laws to combat cyber crimes in the country. That's all we have time for in News R tonight. Coming to you live from the Sierra Leone Broadcasting Corporation. On behalf of the news editor, Ibrahim Mansari, I am Mbalu Bangua. For more information about our programs, do send us an email to www.contactus.slbc.sf. Thanks for your attention. 